Mr. Smith, 65 years old, comes in with right-sided arm weakness. He tells you he couldn't lift his arm yesterday afternoon, but the symptom has now resolved. What will you ask the patient? It's important to start with an open question, so you encourage the patient to tell the story. For instance, you could ask the patient, how did your symptoms start? How did it all start? Let the patient talk for one and a half to two minutes. This is what some people call the golden minute. Usually, it takes one and a half to two minutes for the patient to tell you their story and you get a lot of information. Make sure you listen when the patient is telling their story. Then you may ask follow-up questions or more specific questions. Ask about associated symptoms such as numbness, slurred speech, visual loss, the duration of the symptom, whether the symptoms have completely resolved within 24 hours. The history needs to be focused, so make sure that you're asking pertinent questions. You may want to ask red flag questions such as whether there's been any confusion, loss of consciousness, or whether the patient had any seizures, dizziness, headache, or palpitations. Be mindful if the patient has past medical history that's relevant. For example, if the patient has hypertension or diabetes, check whether these conditions are well controlled. Don't forget to ask patients about their ideas, concern, and expectation. Make sure that you ask these questions in context. For example, in this scenario, if the patient came in with this right-sided weakness, then you may want to ask the patient, did you have any thoughts as to what could be happening? The patient may tell you that they're worried about a stroke, or they may tell you that something else. So make sure that you ask these questions. Ask whether they have any particular concerns, what were they hoping to get out from the consultation. A patient may well tell you that they don't want to waste your time, and they didn't think it was serious, but it was the wife who actually wanted them to get seen today. So make sure that you ask about the patient's ideas, concern, and expectation. Next, make sure that you ask about psychosocial history. In this scenario, asking about driving, smoking, and alcohol are all relevant because if this patient has a suspected TIA, then it will have implications on their driving. And if they have any risk factors such as smoking or they are drinking alcohol, when you ask questions about psychosocial or occupation, make sure that it's in context and it's being asked naturally. Don't ask a question that's going to sound clunky. For example, if you signpost to a patient about asking smoking, you might say to the patient, our habits can affect our health. I can see on the note that you smoke. Is it still the case? By signposting the question, you show the patient that you've read their notes and you show the examiner that you're confirming about the risk factors. Exploring the patient's occupation is relevant in this scenario because if the patient is a truck driver or a lorry driver, then it will have massive implications on his work. You may also want to check how did the patient come to the surgery today? Did they drive? If this patient said to you that they drove to the surgery today, what will you do to make sure that the patient is safe to go back home? As per the DVLA guidance, the patient must not drive for a month, so ask the patient if they have any family members or any friends who could pick them up from the surgery to their home so that they get there safely because they can't drive for the moment. Once you have taken a focused history about the illness, you've excluded any other serious problems, you have taken a history of the ideas, concern, and expectation, and you have a good idea about psychosocial elements of the case, then you may proceed by examination. How will you examine this patient? Let me know down in the comment section what will you examine in this scenario. Relevant examination for this presentation will be checking the patient's blood pressure, pulse, checking for the fast tool which is face arm speed test, consider doing a neuro examination, it may well be normal if the patient has TIA, consider assessing the patient's cardiovascular system. In the context of the RCA, you need to proceed by a focus examination because you don't want to spend too much time in data gathering at the expense of clinical management. To score in interpersonal skills, make sure that you explain to the patient about what examination you're going to do, be gentle with the patient and respectful, and share your finding with the patient in a late-term way. This will all give you good marks for the interpersonal skills. Once you're happy with data gathering, next is to go into clinical management. This should be done by minute six or seven. 
What investigations will you request for this patient? You may want to do an ECG to exclude any arrhythmia or atrial fibrillation. You may want to do some blood tests such as full blood count, UNEs, LFTs, TFTs, lipids, and fasting glucose. Patients with suspected TIA need to have further investigation in secondary care, so they may need to have ultrasound scan of the carotid artery and brain imaging. What are the differential diagnoses that you need to think about? It is useful to think about your list of differential diagnoses to make sure that you don't miss anything important. So differential diagnoses of this presentation will include space occupying lesion, such as a brain tumor, subdural hematoma, hypoglycemia, drug and alcohol toxicity, syncope, or a migraine with aura. If you think the patient has a TIA, then how will you explain this to the patient? Your explanation needs to be simple and in lay term. So make sure that you know how you will explain to a patient that they have a TIA. When you explain a condition to a patient, it's useful to build on the patient's knowledge. So it's helpful to know what's the patient's baseline knowledge. If you've done your ideas, concern, and expectation, you may have more information about what the patient think could be going wrong here or whether they have any ideas at all. And then you can build on that. For example, if the patient say to you when they first came in that they thought this could be due to the slap on the wrong side and you think that this is a TIA, you might say to the patient, I know when you first came in you thought that this could be because of the position you slept, but I don't think this is a case. What I think is going on here is you have a TIA. What do you know about TIA? The patient then tell you whether they know much or don't know anything about it. Then you can go into an explanation about TIA. TIA is an abbreviation for transient ischemic attack. Transient meaning temporary. Ischemic means loss of the blood supply. An attack is the symptoms that you've had with a right-sided weakness. So some people call it a mini-stroke because it is not a full-blown stroke. What we call a mini-stroke is when the symptoms resolve completely within 24 hours, as in your case. However, if we don't treat it, it can go into a full-blown stroke. So this is how you could explain TIA to a patient. Then you may want to go into how you will manage the TIA. The next step of the explanation is to discuss about the management. How will you manage this patient? According to NICE, patient with suspected TIA needs to have 300 mg of aspirin until you're seen in a TIA clinic. This patient needs to have an urgent referral to TIA clinic. NICE recommends not to use any scoring system to determine urgency of referral. So you may have come across the ABCD2 score to assess the severity of a TIA, but don't use it to determine the urgency of your referral. If a patient drives, it's important to discuss about the DVLA fitness to drive. Make sure that you explain to the patient that it's not safe for them to drive and their insurance will not be covered. So for this scenario, the patient should not drive for a period of four weeks. If the patient is a lorry driver or a truck driver, then the restriction on driving is more serious. For group one, which includes car or motorcycle, they must not drive for one month. There's no need to notify DVLA after a single TIA. Multiple TIAs over a short period of time is different. If the patient does have multiple TIAs, then they require three months free from further attacks before they can resume driving. And the DVLA should be notified. For group two, which include a lorry or bus, the license is refused or revoked for one year following a stroke or TIA. This can be a difficult conversation for some patients, especially if somebody is self-employed and this will impact on their financial life. So it's important that you break this bad news carefully. It is worthwhile considering secondary prevention. For example, lifestyle advice. You may need to discuss about smoking cessation, weight loss if the patient is obese or overweight, and to eat a healthy diet. Consider starting patients on lipid-lowering medications such as statin. It's important to establish who's living with the patient in data gathering because then when you make your clinical management plan, then you can check with the patient whether the partner would be able to take them to the appointment, to the TIA clinic, 
Or if they don't live with anybody, then who's going to support them? Who's going to help them to go to the clinic? To complete your clinical management, make sure that you make a follow-up arrangement with the patient. You may say to the patient that we could touch base in two weeks' time once you're seen in the TIA clinic, then let me know. Make sure that you also cover safety net advice. If patient symptoms recur or develop numbness, weakness, slurred speech, or visual loss, then ask them to dial 999 straight away. If you have any suggestions, any comments about how you would approach this case, please let me know down in the comment section. I look forward to reading your comment. If you have any suggestion on what case to cover next, please let me know down in the comment section. I hope you like this video. If you enjoy watching this video, please smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.